Um, I get to talk about my one of my most favorite things in the whole world, being a person who grew up attached to my computer and now attached to my phone. You know, I read on my phone. I download all my stuff for classes. I am a student of religion, so I go to a lot of religious services or like I'll be in class and someone will quote a Bible verse, so I'll just pull up my Bible on my phone, you know? And it's kind of funny because that's not really what people think when they think of religion. They usually think I'm like reading something really old, but I like to look at the way we think about religion now because it's so interesting how contemporary religion can be because it evolves with people. It's just like culture. You would never say, oh, our culture is so not us. Of course our culture is us. That's, we made it, you know? So the interesting thing about religion and, and pop culture and technology is this right behind me, raves. So raves have now turned into these giant parties, basically. Now these are like mostly festivals, but they originated in the 80s being these small underground parties with these kids who would come together just trying to have a good time, party, listen to some electronic dance music, EDM. So the thing about EDM is that it's inherently technological because without technology, we couldn't do this. We couldn't use the computer. We couldn't spin these records. And now in 2016, there's actually a button you can press to link up any two songs. So you can think of any songs that you think might go together kind of well, and you can download this app and it'll sync them perfectly. So some people think that like takes away from the understanding and like the talent that you need. But the reason why raves are religious sounds ridiculous at first. People are always like, are you kidding? No, I'm not. I'm not. Um, there's really something about EDM that sets itself aside from anything else, and that's PLUR. PLUR is the acronym, P-L-U-R, Peace, Love, Unity, and Respect. And it stands for the four tenets that all ravers tend to believe in. Um, and the interesting thing about it is it's like the Apostles' Creed of raving. <laughs> and because it's like the rules. And what other genre subculture like deadheads or any other subculture you can't really think of something that has like a specific phrase that means this is what we stand for so plur is that so the interesting thing about plur is that it actually gave way to this ritual that um is started with these little bracelets i'm wearing they're called candy with a k and an i <laughs> um and they're made out of tiny pony beads that little kids play with so ravers would make these singles or cuffs or masks or bras or um, skirts, all made of these pony beads. It would take hours. And you go to a festival, you meet up with someone, you say, hey, do you want to trade? And they'll say, of course, because they're at a rave. So of course they want to trade with you. And you go up to the person, you do peace, the P from plur, and you put your fingers together like this. Love, you both do a heart, unity, and respect. And when you do that, you have the opportunity to trade a bracelet with someone. So this is like a real empathized ritual or ritualized version of empathy um, to go up to someone and give them something that you worked hard on. Even if I worked three minutes on it, still like it's not something anyone would just do normally. So I think that's part of what initially made me think raves were religious. And it turns out there's like an internet community full of, there's like specific apps for ravers and plenty of ways where you can interact all the time. And it's really interesting because not only is technology the shared interest, technology connects them all the time. So you're connected through what you love. And um, they all wear such, see they're, they have candy on and they're all wearing crazy outfits as a way to show that they're not in real life. This obviously is not your everyday life and that's, that's on purpose because that type of disorientation definitely helps when you want to get into that religious experience. One of the genres in EDM is called trance. Trance is the, the new word that we use for altered state of consciousness. All of those altered states that you think of when you think of a religious experience, um, monks meditating for hours, trance rituals, these are all historical and now they're reliving, they're alive and well right now at this rave. And so if you're at a trance show, the, the beats are very emphasized, the downbeats are very emphasized, which gets, gives you that like thump, 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 thump that you, assume, that you associate with EDM. And something about the rhythm really gets you into an altered state, interestingly enough, especially if it's three o'clock in the morning, you know, you're in the middle of the night, there's all these lasers. And another thing that's very prevalent, obviously, and that's normally mostly what's talked about is the drug use. 
which, I mean, we can say a lot about drug use, but William James talked about it in the 1800s and um, talked about how it's a, a vehicle for religious experience. So, I mean, you can take that for what you will, but the, the drugs are still heavily used. And one of the most popular drugs is MDMA. People call it Molly, people call it ecstasy. And when they're doing it, there's a heightened sense of empathy with that particular drug more than with other drugs. So not only are you experiencing this ritualized empathy, but this overarching empathy from the drugs you're taking, the in general environment. Um, and like I said, peace is peace, love, and unity and respect are the, the tenants, so they're echoed everywhere in the decor and all around you, so it's, it's hard to get away from. I just think if people looked closer at the things around them, they would really see that there's lots of vibrant religious activities in all the secular things we do every day, um, whether they be rituals or um, rites of passages. Even something as easy as graduation can be seen like as a, a rite of passage or, or a ritual. And we don't really tend to think of that as something religious. Thank you.